Okay, now what are we doing? Q and A. Now they have questions. Oh shit! <laughs> now the trouble begins. All right. Uh, so do I hang out? We have a mic over there, and let me help you. People can line up. Uh, sure. Yeah. So there's a mic stand over there. If you have questions for Vidas, you can line up. Wow, Vidas, you kind of scared the Harvard crowd. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm not going to sit down unless you do. So can we get one more chair for the Oh, thank you. Um, we're good. Any questions for Viridas, you can line up at the mic over here. Wow. You want to go first? No. <laughs> I promise I'll keep it quick because I know nobody really cares about like, opinions and all that stuff. But um, yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, my name is Kashish. Uh, okay. I'm a singer-songwriter from New York City. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know, with you going into comedy and going into entertainment, how hard or easy was it for you growing up in Indian culture where it's traditionally not generally accepted to go into the entertainment industry? I, um, I didn't grow up in India, so I should clarify that. I grew up in Africa, in, in Nigeria. But I think comedically, a lot of people don't give credit to how long comedy has been happening in India. You know, so Johnny Lever is the best comedian India has ever seen, and that man's been doing it for 40 plus years. Uh, Anupam Kher, who's coming here tomorrow night, has a show called Kuch Bhi Ho Sakta, which I saw when I was 16 years old, and it motivated me to become a comedian. So please come and see him tomorrow night. His comedy is great. His tweets I don't like so much, but <laughs> his comedy is amazing, and he's a sublime, talented artist. We have Hasya Kavis, you know, we have Urdu poets, and that's our hybrid form of satire. So, when I, much like any other, my parents were just like, if you can pay the rent, uh, you can do what the hell you like. So, yeah, that's my answer. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Veer. What's up, man? Uh, over here, every morning I watch like the daily show and then the, at night I watch the nightly show. All these satire news, they're the best things. Mm -hmm. Do you think India will have, uh, have those? I think so. Um, we had somebody called Shekhar Suman. I don't know if you guys remember Shekhar Suman. <laughs> You know, and legit, that was our guy, but slightly more chilled out government at that time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we will, but I think it may not be like a TV show because we're the largest digital market in the world. So it might be YouTube, it might be elsewhere as well. And I think that has to be the other side of the coin with, um, and I say this with all due respect, with real journalism. You know, you don't get a really good news comedy show unless you have really good news in India. So, I think once we get a little bit of this as well, we'll get a little bit of that. So, yeah. And I know I've asked you this before, but what do you think is the role of a, uh, of a comedian in making news more palatable? I don't think that's my role. I think my role is just to make you laugh. You know, uh, and if there's a message in there, hopefully it's not conscious. You know, I've been doing this 12 years. In 12 years, you, maybe you don't get better you don't get funnier, but whatever's in your conscience finds its way onto the page. So, if there's a message in my joke, it's just because that's how I feel, but uh, it's not because I don't trust your political beliefs, so I, I want to put news in front of you. I'm just an idiot and I want to make you laugh. That's it. Doing a very good job. Thank you. Uh, we are awesome. Thank you, man. So, when you first got the idea of uh, trying to do comedy, mm -hmm. and then you did it for the first time ever, uh, you probably had a sense of what you wanted to be, or what kind of comedy you wanted to do, probably. <laughs> Still don't, man. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but maybe you weren't as good as you were to here tonight, and you were fantastic. Uh, so, when, when for the first time you were not as good as you were today, mm -hmm. and with time, and with practice, and with learning, you get better. So, when you, when you fail your own self, did you ever... S after that first performance, did you feel like you failed your own, own self? And then how did you, uh, how did you get better? Uh, and because you mentioned Anupam and how you yeah. like him and how you don't like his tweets, mm -hmm. I love your comedy. You are the best. You are my Anupam Kher. <laughs> and on my blog, I have a list of my gurus. I would add you there. And there are many things that, that I don't agree with you on. And I'll list them as well. And I'm proud of you. I love you. Thank you, man. That's very kind. Um, but I'll tell you about my first laugh, and maybe that can, can help. Uh, the first time I ever did stand-up was on the south side of Chicago. There's a, a place called Mike's, and they did open mic nights. 
and it's uh, Tuesday night in your comedian number 45, and it's uh, largely an African-American crowd, and the comics are amazing, and the crowd is tight and loud and amazing. I was booed off stage seven weeks in a row at like 16 seconds because I was trying to do jokes and I was going up and being like, hey guys, you know what's funny about cockroaches? Whatever, I don't know. <laughs> and they was like, man, get off the stage. Um, and I was so frustrated that I wrote a joke and eventually one day I ended up yelling it at the crowd. And it was about Americans and it wasn't very evolved, so I apologize. But um, I went up and I just yelled and I'm like, you know, you Americans take Indians for granted. You don't know how important we are to you. We are your gynecologists, we make sure that your, everything is okay, we sell you your newspapers, we drive your taxis, we sell you condoms in the middle of the night in quickie marts. Without Indians, you'd be starving, stranded, sexless, sterile and stupid. Uh, and that was the, the first laugh. So the only thing I learned from that is tell the truth a little bit and, and you'll get a laugh. Tell the truth but a little bit? Tell the truth and you'll get a laugh. I think you can't pass a lie by an audience. Thank you. So, yeah. And our last question for the cool. night. What's up, Veer? What's up, man? Going well. Um, question for you, like, why did you not say, in your Netflix special, you said you, you were smoking on Marine Drive, threw the cigarette away, and never left mm -hmm. Bombay. So yeah. I'm just curious about, like, what was your dream or aspiration, and why well, did you pursue that? I think you have an array of talent in America who is representing the second generation Indian American. You know, Hassan, Aziz, Kumail Nanjiani, all of these guys, you know, and that's a very well-established perspective here. But I want to bring some India over here, man. You know what I mean? Some, some authentic India. Um, and I don't feel like anybody's doing that. When I watch great comedians who I love, Richard Pryor or, or George Carlin, or, you know, and if Bill Burr does a bit about Tennessee, I'm sitting in Bombay and he's taken me to Tennessee. You know, why can't we do that for Chandigarh and some American people? Um, and for that, I need to be based in India and get perspective from there and then bring that perspective over here. So that's why I live there. Thank you, Veer, for having nothing better to do today. Right. One cool. more round of applause for Veer, please. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.